In this video, I talk about how to use the program ParaView to visualize three-dimensional points and lines. So first, let's start with the file format, which is actually very simple. It's a VTK file. Uh, is one of the many files that ParaView will read. Uh, the VT file, VTK format is pretty simple. It starts with a simple header, followed by a comment of your choosing, one line, followed by ASCII or binary. I always use ASCII. Followed by your data set. Polydata is the type of data set that we're using, that I'm using in this case. There are other choices as well, but polydata has uh, been sufficient for my needs. So the first thing you need in a polydata is a set of points. In this case, I have a thousand points that are each floating point. Here, note that although the X and Y coordinates here are integers, I also have some uh, decimal numbers here. So it's very simple, X, Y, Z, thousand times until we get to the lines. In this case, I have 999 lines. And in order to represent those 999 lines, you need to have almost 3,000 uh, different numbers. So in this case, I am only using single line segments. You can have multi-line segments as well. So in this case, I want two points per line, per multi-line. Uh, this is the uh, this is the index of the first point. So it has to be up here in the upper list. And this is the index of the second point. So it's not the any. This is not coordinates. This says this is the 88th point connecting to the 784th point. And again, there's 999 of these, and each one of them is three numbers. And so that's what this second number here is. It's a very simple format. A pair of you can be a little bit goofy in reporting errors. In fact, it kind of doesn't report errors. If you get a message saying that it can couldn't find a appropriate reader for this file, it probably means you have a syntax error. If you have uh, too, too many lines or too many points rather, uh, such that it doesn't see this word here line as the next command, it will say something like don't know the command. To. So that simply means that you're off in your indexing. But otherwise, very simple format, right? So now let's load it. In. First, let's start by loading in a point or a set of, uh, a set of points. So that will be in this directory points VTK. First, it looks like it's doing nothing, but really it's waiting for you to apply. And in this case, because we're displaying points, again, it looks like you're doing nothing, but points are very small. In fact, infinitesimally, infinitely small in pair view. But there's an easy solution for that by simply going here to point Gaussian here up top and you get this. All right, so now these balls are kind of big, not very helpful. So let's go down here, adjust the radius to something smaller. So now you can display your points, okay? So that's simple points, which is not the file that I just showed a moment ago that uh, that one also in includes lines. Uh, it's a separate file that has only the points. So let's get rid of that here, hit delete. So now open file again, go into my directory here, of scale series. Now in this case, I have a whole series of files that are numbered in sequential order and pair view will say, hey, you've got a bunch of files here with the same, uh, same prefix, but there's only a number difference in here. Would you like to load them all together? So let's do that. Again, we need to hit apply. And so now we have a fairly flat looking thing, but here we can see that um, that the series of points, each one of them is a frame in an animation. Okay, now here we don't really see a whole lot of depth because it's all um, similar um, colors. So let's add some elevation to it. So here we have this guy selected. We go to filters, alphabetical, we want elevation. Okay, so by default, so again, gotta hit apply. Now by default, the Elevation will be the distance from the origin, which in my case is not really, really what I want. So what I go here, do here is go up to Z axis and click on that and hit apply again. And so now we'll see that the coloring goes from blue to red based on the Z uh, distance. Okay. Now we can again show this animation, All right? So now let's try something a little bit different. Let's get rid of our existing data. I will again, first load up the points, apply Gaussian and adjust radius. Then, then we want a Delaunay tri triangulation. Apply, okay. And one more, we want the three-dimensional minimum spanning tree of that. All right, so how does one best go about computing the minimum spanning tree of a bunch of three-dimensional points? Now with, with, uh, um, with the minimum spanning tree algorithm, it wants to start with a actual, with a graph. Now you could just do a complete graph. Every point connects to every other point. But when you have a large number of points, that's a large, really large number of edges, right? It's N squared. So what we wanna do is first generate a triangulation of the points, which has been proven to be the proper basis or a uh, correct basis of a minimum spanning tree. And for that, I use the Seagal library to compute uh, that triangulation. That's what we see here, okay? And then based on that graph, you can then 
use the Dijkstra or Prim, alg uh, the Krusta Kruskal or Prim algorithm to compute the minimum spanning tree. So one in interesting exercise is to kind of have them morph from one to the other, and that's what I'll show here. So first we want to show a camera and do a plus so that we can then do this, this. Uh, that kind of spins through quickly, so let's do 100 frames. So now it looks a little bit better, okay? But again, we need to have the elevations. So let's do that on each of the, the pieces of data. Alphabetical, elevation, we want Z axis, and hit apply with point Gaussian. Oops, and we want to, again, adjust the, where is it? Then we want to adjust here, okay? Then we do the same thing for this guy. Filter, alphabetical, elevation, Z axis, and apply. And then again here, filter, elevation, Z axis, and apply, okay? So now, again, we have our rotational view. <clears throat> now we kind of, to make this interesting, we can start with our points and adjust the visibility over time. So for that, we are going to take uh, elevation of one. It will stay, start with elevation one, elevation two here. We can adjust the opacity of it here over time. Double click here. So now we want to add some points. So at time point three, three, and at, oops, point, Point three three point six six. We want to do a ramp first from zero to zero. So initially it will do nothing. And then between 33 and 66, we want to ramp it up to one and leave it at that. Whenever we have an adjustment, it will happen from the previous point to the current point. Do that okay here. Do that okay here. Turn this guy off so that we can see here what's going on. See? See that it kind of comes into view. So we're going to adjust the opacity over time of the first elevation. What we'll want to do is have it uh, come into view and then leave view. So to do that, we'll add a line down here, elevation. Double click here, add two new points. We want 0.33.66. And then we're going to ramp from zero to one and back to zero. Okay, so now we'll see that it comes in and then goes out. Now, as we're fading out, we're going to want the MST to fade in. So let's do that on this guy. So we want elevation three. We want opacity there. Double click again, add two points. Point three, three, point six, six. So here we want it to just stay where it is. So before it came into view and then left view, went up to, to one and then back down to zero. So in this case, we're going to want it to go to one here. I believe I got that right. Let's try that. And there we are. So now that I have an animation, we can then export it. Go to here to file to save animation. Click and then here you can tell it, hey, I want an AVI file. Give it a name. Gives you a message saying that it wants to match the format specifications. It's a very minor change here. It shows you what it's doing. So now, so now we have a AVI file. And there we go.